Moyes. Moyesi. Moyesi. Yeah, it's Moyesi. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome back to my practice room. If you see me wearing the same clothes for the next few videos, don't say anything about it. Today we are here to talk about love tones. And to start us off, I'm going to going to read some quotes from the Marcel Moisy book. De la sonorité à a technique. Don't worry, I'm not going to read the French stuff. Yeah, basically for those who don't know, Marcel Moisy was a very famous flute player and I guess he like did some important work in developing tone exercise for flute players and he was probably a teacher at the Paris Conservatoire. Let's be real here. Yeah, so I thought I would read you guys some of the quotes from one of his books so that you can understand why practicing long tones is a thing we should be doing all the time. All right, so let's get into it. After long hesitation, it seemed to me that the publication of this collection would perform a useful service since I can affirm that only after long work at the following exercises did I achieve a satisfactory improvement of my embouchure and that at the present time these exercises still form the basis of my personal work and of my teaching. There are two reasons which make a homogeneous tone difficult on the flute. The difference of timbre between the three registers and the difficulty of production on certain notes. Basically, when we're practicing our long tones, the column of air has to pass through an increasingly long passage and will therefore emerge increasingly weakened and lacking in warmth. So we're practicing long tones to strengthen and warm up our tone. And that's for the lowest notes. These highly important observations show us that the quality, strength, and accuracy of a note depend on the one hand on the position of the lips over the mouthpiece and on the other hand the strength and speed of the column of air. So apparently B natural is one of the easiest notes for all kinds of flute players to produce so that's why we start our long tones on the B. Yeah he says if you go to the piano and play a descending chromatic scale from B to low C you will find that the B does not have the same color as the low C and yet you will find it impossible to tell where the change took place and he suggests that we try to emulate that on our instrument as well, explaining that just like pianists, one should not be distracted by this business of octaves and one should tell oneself that it is no harder to get a B flat than a B natural, to leap a third than to move a semitone. Matter of time, patience, and intelligent work. He says we should practice our long tones at 60. Anyways, so this book has like some tone exercises, not only long tones, but other tone exercises. And it is free on IMSLP. At the very least, it has some academic thoughts on tone exercises and tone in general for woodwind instruments and it has it written in French, English, and German. Um, I'm gonna play my long tones for you in a second. Basically, I'm just gonna do a chromatic scale down, chromatic scale up, but very slowly. Yeah, maybe I will get my metronome in my ear. I'm gonna go at 60, but you can go anywhere from 50 to 60 as your quarter note. We're gonna hold the first note for two beats and then the following chromatic step down for four beats. And you will notice that as I practice, I will start adding some vibrato in, but you don't have to. Practicing straight tone at first is certainly the way to go. And we can talk about adding vibrato into long tone some other time. So metronome at 60 and we're doing chromatic steps starting on the B flat, the ledger line above the skin.
Obviously, let's retry that one.
keep going. Try that last one because the connection was not smooth. There you go. Do that when you pick up your flute every time before you start playing anything else. It takes 10 minutes. Try and pay attention and make sure you're making the most beautiful sound. And like Marcel said, even he was still doing it in his own daily practice when he was like super famous teaching at like the most prestigious classical music school in the world. I don't know if he actually taught at the Paris Conservatoire, I'm just guessing that he did. <laughs> He's dead now unfortunately, but his son also became a flute player. I think I believe his name was Louis. Louis Moisy? Yeah, so both uh, Marcel and his son Louis were huge, huge flute players that did a lot for the world of technique and repertoire, so I don't know. Thank you, old dead white men. <laughs> uh, yeah, so just practice your long tones like I said. It takes like, what, 10 minutes? 10 minutes for better tone? I think that's a good trade-off. I'm gonna thank you for practicing with me. Here's your reminder to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll see you guys next week. Don't say anything about my outfits, okay? And yeah.